Welcome back students. We are just about finishing our last uh, day or two of unit two. And um, hopefully, I'm still waiting for some of you guys to turn in uh, those notebook checks, the final notebook check for unit two. Um, I believe, I can't quite remember what pages it was. Maybe it was like the plate boundary pages. I'll have to double check, but that is specified specifically on our Canvas page, so make sure to do that. Um, instead of the workbook assignment, I think I'm gonna post some writing, a writing question assignment uh, that would be kind of like a part of your writing, your writing questions on your test. Uh, and then I'm also, I'm also, I have yet to post the um, last unit quiz because, uh, last unit quiz of this quarter, because uh, I did want to quickly finish Mountains before I posted that. I want to make sure you guys have everything you need to, to do well and succeed on, on the, those questions in that test. Um, I think it's going to be maybe 20 questions, so I want you guys to do your very best on that. Okay, guys, but other than that, uh, again, check your canvas. There's one more week. The quarter ends Friday on the 23rd, so make sure you get all your, make sure you get any assignments turning you haven't turned in already for partial credit, and make sure you are always on task and ahead of, ahead of things moving forward in the future, so get ahead on those things. Uh, number one, what is the difference between tension, compression, and shear stress? And number two, what type of boundary goes with each type of fault line? So again, we, uh, the other day on page 19, we finished fault types, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So we should know all of these. Remember, we had the three faults, normal, thrust reverse, and strike slip, right? So pause the video, answer these on your own in your notebook. This is on page 20. Again, we are almost done. This, this notebook would be 21, this unit would be 21 pages. All right, so first and foremost, tension. Uh, that's a force created from stretching and pulling objects apart. So like, you have a string and it pulls apart, that is tension inside that string, right, tension. And a lot of people mix this up on the test. Again, it is not like compression when you push things together. So compression is the force that you create when you push things together. Again, compression is the force you create when you push things together. And then lastly, shear stress, kind of like rubbing your hands together, is like friction, is the uh, force created by slippage or friction of objects, right, slippage or friction. Okay, uh, moving on to our next topic, which would be the um, number two, faults and what boundaries they go with. Again, normal faults, one plate slips down. That's associated with divergent boundaries. Next, we have our reverse thrust, which is when the plate gets pushed up. Obviously, we think of that when it comes together, so that'll be convergent boundaries. And lastly, as you probably assume, the um, strike slip, it's going side to side horizontally, just like our transform boundaries. So again, know those concepts of tension, compression, and shear stress, and know those three faults and what boundaries they go with as well, okay? Moving on, guys, this is the last update on our table of contents. Go ahead and update, add pages 20 through 21. That'll be mountains, again, pages 20 through 21, mountains. Pause there if you need more time. Uh, and then really quick, again, we're gonna have you guys um, watch this video. What are the four steps to surviving a tsunami? We, last tsunami video of the year, we've learned about tsunamis, we've talked about them, but we need to know forever in, like, like we talked about um, with the earthquakes, if we are ever in danger of a tsunami, I want you guys to be able to protect yourselves and protect your families, so what needs to be done? Let's go ahead and check that out. Uh-oh, guys, looks like my PowerPoint is freezing up. Oh, well, the answer's right there. Oops, uh, nothing I can do about that, guys. It is what it is. But, again, please watch the video. It's actually really entertaining, really good. Um, let's go ahead and watch a minute of it real quick, real quick. So, they're saying people on the beach, if you're just tanning on the beach, which is what you saw earlier, right? Tanning on the beach, and a wave comes your way, what do you do? Here's how to survive a tsunami according to science. Tsunamis are triggered by intense underwater activity, usually an earthquake or an underwater volcanic eruption. These events displace huge volumes of water, pushing it up from the ocean's floor to its surface. But when gravity pulls it back down, all this built-up energy is released outwards, forming deadly waves that grow stronger as they ripple across the ocean. A tsunami's waves can be 100 kilometers long and sometimes taller than 30 meters. They can travel across whole oceans, moving at the speed of a jet airplane. So with such speed, strength, and stamina, how does anyone stand a chance? Yep. Very, really cool graphics there. Um, very visual. And if you watch all of this, you'll get, the, you'll get all of these steps. So again, please do yourself a favor. Watch all this video. Know the steps to surviving a tsunami, protecting you and your, your loved ones in the middle of a tsunami. A lot of, a lot of impor important key uh, tips here that can 
honestly, you know, save your health and save your life. Um, but let's go ahead and move on, guys. What I want you to do, I'm going to expand this here. I'm going to expand my, my view because you got to see this. Okay. What's up? <laughs> I forgot my glasses at home today, so that's why I'm not wearing them. But uh, go, last time we'll do this, guys, for a while. I want you to go to page 21. It says 20, but I wrote 21 there. You see that? Okay. Title this Types of Mountains. Types of Mountains. There's four total. We're going we're to do two today and two tomorrow. Two today, two tomorrow. Okay. I have four categories. Okay. On one side, I'm going to have my illustrations. On the other side, I'm going to have my descriptions. Okay. Types of mountains. Types of mountains. Four, four. All right, so go ahead and take some time to do that. Pause the video. Now, what do I want each category to look to have? These are your four mountain types. Okay, so look here. Our first type is folded mountains, folded mountains. Okay, that's our first type. That's in the one, the first column. I've got some kind of folded bent rock ridges here. And point to the edges that are tall. We call those anticline. And the middle edge that's going downward, we call it syncline. So make sure you have that folded mount. Our next category, guys, are going to be fault block mounts. Fault block. I have layers that are not being bent, but they're being pu uh, pulled up, kind of like fractured upwards. We call those fault block mounts. Fault block. That's your second category. Okay, we'll go over those two today. And then tomorrow, Really easy to draw. We'll go over um, volcanic. It's a little simple volcano. And then we'll go over dome. Dome. So those should be your four illustrations and your four categories. I used to do foldables, but they just took too much time, and I didn't think I needed them anymore. So we just don't do those anymore. But, again, those are your four categories. Let's go ahead and go over. Even in a. Um, before we go over, um, well, let's go over. Let's go over folded mountains real quick, real quick. It's going to be a short lesson today, guys. Okay, so for folded mountains, okay, understand that they are the rock bending mountains, okay? They're the most common type of mountains we have, the most common type there are, okay? As I just stated before, guys, the ant, so, Different uh, and by the way, these are mountains. These are the mountains you see in TV a lot. The mountains you see in movies. Okay, we're talking Himalayas. Sorry about that, guys. And Rocky Mountains. Okay, um, so anything like Mount Everest is, is a considered a folded mountain. Okay, and um, understand that the ridges on it have different ter uh, terms. So anticline is an upward dip. Okay, syncline is a downward dip. And as you didn't see earlier, a monocline is just a horizontal, straightforward, not even a dip, it's just, it's just straightforward. These are all the different edges of mountains, how they move and change about, okay? Folded mountains. Two plates coming together, and neither one goes down, they just kind of both push up, push up up into the sky, okay? Then another quick video, and some things I want you to think about with this video, is um, how are mountains formed and how much can a mountain grow? Is there a limit? Can our Mount Everest, is, Mount Everest is growing every year, Will it one day go to space? Can we take a mountain and walk into space with a mountain? That'd be pretty cool. And I want to find out. Let's go ahead and check it out right now. Again, I can only play one minute of this video, guys. You need to watch all of it on your own. Let's check it out. Two and a half times the height of Mount Everest. On Earth, Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in our solar system, towers 21,000 meters above the surface of Mars, nearly two and a half times the height of Mount Everest. On Earth, you would need a spacesuit to survive at that altitude. But could there even be a mountain that tall here on our home planet? Based on the strength of Earth's gravity and the density and strength of rock, in principle, you could make a single conical mountain that stretched between New York and Chicago and soared over 45 kilometers. That's twice the size of Olympus Mons and definitely dwarfs Everest. However, there are a couple of reasons why we can't actually have that humongous of a mountain here on Earth. For one, Earth's crust is made up of continental plates that essentially float in the semi-solid rock of the mantle below. If you add more weight above the surface, they sink lower into the Earth's hot interior, and when they sink far enough, they soften and basically melt. For our conical mountain, that gives a new height limit. So it looks like there's some limitations. Looks like we're not going to be able to get to space with our mountains. So mountains do have a limit, looks like. Um... And if you saw on Mars, not so, not so much of an issue because they have Olympus Mons, which is the biggest mountain in the entire solar system, right? 
like three times the size of Everest, seems like. Um, but again, mountains do have a limit here on Earth. And watch the rest of that, you'll find out why. If it gets too big, it melts the bottom of it, and then you'll see how erosion and water and weather actually affects the tops of mountains, making them shorter as well. Okay, moving on to our last mountain of the day. I'm gonna keep it short for today, okay? Again, here's another illustration of anticline and syncline. Gotta know those, right? Gotta label those in our top category here on page 21, types of mountains, right? And then a little good picture example of those folded mountains. Again, the rock is bending. But next, uh, we'll get to that another day. Uh, let's skip that, skip that. Why is Mount Everest so tall? We'll skip that, we'll get to that stuff another day. Uh, last one of the day, guys, is fault block. Fault block, okay? Mountains, these are where rock, instead of being bended, rock is now being pulled apart and broken into chunks. It gets shuffled and pulled and broken into chunks, thrown up into the sky, kind of wider. Our folded mountains can get more tall and more widespread. The fault block mountains, though, they can be a little more wide and, and, and kind of consistent with their shape. So move up and down, stacking one on top of the other. A great example of this, we, we talk about the Rocky and the um, uh, Himalayas. Well, fault block instead would be the Sierra Nevada mountains. Okay, Sierra Nevada mountains are a good example of that. So Sierra Nevada mountains. A lot of mountains on the West Coast. If you guys that love mountains or inter are interested in mountains, all on the West Coast, lots of mountains, okay? Uh, so yeah, Earth doesn't get, Earth's crust doesn't bend, it gets pulled apart and broken into blocks and chunks. Guys, that concludes, um, what? Well, I've got a really cool video I will show you guys. And I found um, this man who obviously is not afraid of heights. He does not harness himself to the top of the mountain. He actually just runs on the top. Just has running shoes, Where does running on the top of this mountain. On the as, here with our as narrow as it is, he somehow runs without tripping. He climbs it without tripping. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this because it's just super cool. Students in class loved it. I'll show you a minute of it. Look at this, guys. Can, can you believe this? Look, look at what we're seeing here. I mean, this mountain is astronomically tall. I can imagine it's slightly cold up there. Also, keep, keep in mind, on the tops of mountains, there's a lot of what? A lot of wind. That could make him lose his balance, am I right? Just an incredible sights. Would you do it? I would not. I know I wouldn't do it. Oh, here's, now it's HD. And I can tell you, as somebody. It's like dancing with the mountains. As you somebody. Stay in the summits. As somebody who skydived before, it kind of happens so fast, I can just accept that it's happening. But if, if, if I can slowly, like I'm afraid of heights. If I can slowly interpret and visualize being way up in the sky for a long time, that to me is more terrifying than just jumping out of the sky. That's just me though. Less adrenaline, more fear in that situation. So go ahead, I'll post it to Canvas. Make sure to watch all of that. It's a GoPro video, so cool. Uh, it makes me a little anxious at times, but very cool. To end the day, let's go ahead and do our question. Last question, we should, have, we should know this based on what we talked about earlier. Which mountain type is the most common and involves rock bending? This is a piece of cake we just talked about. Is it A, folded, B, fault block, C, volcanic, or D, dome? The answer is gonna be positive if you wanna take a, a good guess. Is gonna be A, folded mountains, A, folded mountains. Guys, we'll get through the rest of the mountains tomorrow. Hope everyone's doing well. We'll have our writing assignment and our last unit quiz of the quarter posted very soon. Make sure to get your notebook check finished. Make sure to get any other assignments, the vocab finished, okay? This is Mr. Campbell. If you have any questions, I'm gonna to get to those right away on Canvas. This is Mr. Campbell, signing out.